डियर फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू दिस इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजीनियरिंग नॉलेज शेयरिंग चैनल एम वी पावर सिस्टम वी हैव ऑलरेडी कंप्लीटेड फोर सेशन ऑन द पावर इक्विपमेंट साइजिंग एंड देयर इज अनदर कपल ऑफ सेशन इज रिक्वायर्ड टू बी कंटिन्यूड बट अनफॉर्चुनेटली लॉट ऑफ रिक्वेस्ट हैज कम टू मी फ्रॉम माय डिफरेंट फ्रेंड्स for conducting some less some sessions on completely different aspects that is the generator control system so having received all this request i thought to change my plan from the equipment sizing for the time being keeping at hold we will finish this generator control system and then we'll come back again to the equipment sizing so this workshop will be treated as a workshop 6 and then this workshop we will discuss about this generator various control aspects so when we are going to discuss about the generator control aspects that is a turbo generator system that means a generator running with a prime mover that prime mover could be a diesel generator it could be steam turbine it could be gas turbine or it could be hydraulic system so for that type of generator control aspects when we going to discuss there are mainly three control aspects one is the generator synchronization aspect second aspect is the generator uh, synchronizing aspects or you can say a parallel operation of the generator generators second aspect is the generator kilowatt sharing and third aspect is the generator kvr sharing or reactive power sharing these are the three main aspects of the generator uh, generators when we are going to discuss about the generator control now we'll go one by one we'll discuss all these three aspects in three we'll try to cover in three uh, session today session will be considered as a workshop 6 session 1 in this session we'll discuss about this generator's parallel operation or generator synchronization now question is why we need generator synchronization because generator synchronization is required when there is there is a generator running more than one generators if in a in a power system if more than one generator is running in that case generator parallel operation comes into picture so why we need more than one generator there are various reasons uh, suppose there is a power requirement of 2 megawatt as for example i am considering so in that case we can purchase one 2 megawatt generator which can cater the power to the load that is fine but the problem is if the generator fails then the entire load will be shed there is no other generators available or if even we have another generator of 2 megawatt one may be running one standby if this 2 megawatt generator which is running if that shed or that is stop immediately all the load will be shed again the other generator to be started then only it could cater for that is one option one aspect second aspect if this generators even there if there are no two generator only one generator then in that case we have to be a standby so till the generator if the generator is stopped for any reason then till the generator is not coming back you cannot get the power so in either option whether you have a one generator running one is standby or only one generator only in both the option you have a shutdown and you cannot avoid it but in the same scenario instead of one generator if i instead of one generator of 2 megawatt this 2 megawatt generators we have two combination 1 plus 1 we can require this is a requirement so we can go one by one another is a 1 megawatt only 1 into 2 megawatt 2 megawatt one machine both option we can go but in this option if the running generator fail or trip there is a shutdown and in that case if the run generator fail there is no option even the second generator run so in both the case we have a shed but if this 2 megawatt load in instead of single generator if i put two numbers one megawatt machine that means one plus one megawatt we we are running so if any of the machine trip then still another one megawatt load could be catered so we have in that case we don't have that total shutdown some of the plant half of the plant is running secondly it may happen the total load is not two megawatt at this moment at this moment load is one megawatt and within the next 2 to 3 years the load will be coming to make out considering that aspects we have considered one number 2 megawatt machine okay in that case it what is happening if there is only one machine so at this moment the machine will be running about 50% of the load 
So machine efficiency will be very less. But if I go in that way, suppose I have a 1 megawatt power today and after 1 year I have a 2 megawatt power requirement. In that case, instead of 1 number 2 megawatt machine, if I purchase 2 numbers, 1 megawatt machine, in that case what will happen? Today I will run 1 machine and other will remain a standby. Then after 2 years when 2 megawatt load will come, I will run another machine and at that time I can purchase another 1 megawatt standby. Or on the first day, I can install three numbers machine, three numbers machine of one into one megawatt. In that case, today there I have a three machine running, three machines present. One machine I will be running today, other two machine stand by. After two years, in uh, during this time, if any of the machine bell I can, I have a two stand by. And after one year, when another one megawatt load will come, I will run two machine, another one will be stand by, and that will be continued. But if I go in this option. In that case, 2 megawatt, I need a with a standby, then I have to purchase 2 megawatt, 2 number machine. Today, this machine will be running 50% load up to 1 year. After 1 year, this load will come. At that time, this will machine will be running. So, in the, at that time, if the machine fail, immediately it will trip. Uh, either today or after 1 year, when one of the machine running with a 2 megawatt, when this machine fail, immediately total shutdown, then I have to start the other machine. But in this case, when this 2 machine is running 1 megawatt, in either case, I have if one machine trip, I have another machine is always there. So load will not be total shed. Always 50 percent load is there. So there is a operational flexibility. There is a power requirement can be managed in a better way. So that's why we always go by the multiple machines. So when we are going to multiple machines, then question is coming: How the multiple machine to be connected to cater to the common load? In case of single machine, it is very easy. Suppose this is a generator which is producing three phase voltage, right? This three phase voltage, suppose A, B and C. It is through the breaker, it is going to the load bus. Suppose this is a load bus. So it is going over here. This is a load bus, it is connected by, from here all the uh, loads are connected, motors are connected, transformers are connected, all are connected over here. So the moment this breaker closed, when I saw the voltage are generated, required voltage generated, the required frequency, I close the breaker, load will be cut. But if there are two machines like this running, in that case, second machine I cannot connect directly without not or without checking a lot of parameters. Because it is like, suppose there, are, there is a pipeline which is following fluid. Suppose this is one pipeline, this is another pipeline. So this is following one type of fluid, this is a, another, the same fluid but with a different characteristic. Suppose this is a high pressure, this may be uh, uh, 200 psi pressure, it is following and it is following 50 psi pressure. So now our target there is a header. Suppose this is coming to a common header. Suppose this is a common header, it is coming on the common header. This is also coming to the common header. Now if this is a 50 psi, our target is from the header, it will go out. That is that. But if there is a pressure difference at the outlet, so instead of going to the outlet, whatever it is a high pressure, so this fluid will come inside this line. So this will be circulating between these two. It will happen if the pressure difference is the pressure is not same for both the pipeline. The same thing will happen over here. The two generators which we have would like to connect, if these two generators, the parameters are not identical. So instead of giving power to this load bus, it may power between these two. It may happen. Or the different way. We can explain one by one. So that's why in this case, what is happening? When we want to connect multiple number of generators, then complexity is coming in connection of the generators. So how we can simplify that connection arrangement that we discussed when we discussed about the parallel operation or synchronization operation. So synchronization is a process by which multiple generators can be connected to the same load bus one by one. So that process we call synchronization or parallel operation. Parallel operation benefit us to cater the load in a better way to manage the load in a better way and to start to make the proper strategy for the power generation system or the it, it helps the power system to generate same amount of power in a better way and with a better flexibility of operation. So that's why the parallel operation is or synchronization operation is essential. Now to connect the two or multiple generator uh, with the load bus, this is called load bus or the generator bus where the loads are connected, we have to check the various parameter of this electrica, electricity which is produced by a generator. 
Now when we go into the generator, the generator is producing voltage. Now this voltage has a certain characteristics. It is a three phase voltage, right? What are the characteristics of the voltage? First characteristic of the, we say always, a voltage has some magnitude. That magnitude we always refer as a RMS value. With respect to the RMS value, we mention this voltage, right? Suppose I am telling a generator has a voltage 3.3 kV. What is the meaning of that? That is between the two phase of the generator, between A and B or B on C or C and A, it voltage is the RMS value of the voltage is 3.3 kV. That is we mention in the way. Suppose the voltage is a 415 volt. So between the two phase of the generator, the voltage is 415 volt. That is the RMS value of the voltage. That is the first part. So one of the parameter of the generator is a voltage. That is the RMS voltage which is producing by the generator. Voltage, it is called RMS voltage. That is one of the parameter of the voltage. The second point is this. Second point, we say the frequency of the voltage. Now you see, this is a one complete waveform. We know this one complete waveform is a 20 millisecond. What does it mean? 20 millisecond means this is a 50 hertz supply. Okay. This is a, this voltage has a 50 in one second. How many is this type of cycle completed is a 20 millisecond is one cycle. Then one second, one cycle it takes 20 millisecond. Then a 20 millisecond it is giving one cycle. So 1000 uh, millisecond, how much it will be? 1 by 20 into 1000. So if you calculate this thing, it will come in 50 hertz. So the frequency of this supply was the generator. If this is a voltage generated by the generator, another parameter we call frequency. Frequency is a, that is the frequency. Suppose in our case, it is a 50 hertz or 60 hertz. This is another parameter of this voltage. Third point is, this voltage has another parameters. Now it is, I have drawn only single phase. Now, if we uh, draw a three phase, then how it will be? Suppose this is, a, I am drawing the three phase. So this is a one phase. Suppose this is a, this is a, suppose this is a phase. Then B phase will be how much? It is a 120 degree difference. So 120 degree difference means it will come like this way, 120 degree difference. Then the C phase will be coming here. C phase will be coming 120 degree means this is a 90 degree, this is 180 degree, so 3 uh, 240 degree, so it is a 180, 240 is like this, so it will be starting from here, like this, so if you come this way, it will come backward, it is coming backward this way, this will be coming backward this way, so these are the three phases, so this is a A phase, this is a B phase and this is a C phase, it is coming A, B, C, so in a phase angle, if you draw this thing, suppose this is a A, this is a B and this is C or it can be clockwise it is ABC, anti-clockwise ACB. So this is the sequence of the voltage. So this sequence of the voltage is another important parameter. This is also to be looked into. That is a third parameter is we call sequence of voltage. Okay. Third parameter is the sequence of voltage means in what sequence the voltage is coming one after another. That is a, either it is ABC or ACB. Third is a sequence of voltage, voltage sequence. Voltage sequence that is A, B, C or A, C, B, whatever is there. This is voltage sequence. Third is A, you know, this voltage, I am talking this one generator. The fourth parameter is important also. Fourth parameter is, so this is your frequency, we can say designation by F. This is a voltage sequence. It is called, suppose S and this is a voltage B. And the fourth parameter is phase angle. Suppose this is a one, one of the generator is this. This generator, suppose this is a, it starts from here. This is a, suppose this is a A phase. It is a generator A. A generator is producing A phase voltage like this. And there is a B generator, GB. It has also the same A phase voltage. But this A phase voltage, suppose it starts from here. Suppose this is a 90 degree from here. It is a zero. This is this is a size is angle. Okay. It is a starts from zero and it goes like when it is zero at that time it has a 90 degree. It is the same instant. The instant I am talking about suppose this is the instant T1. At that time the magnitude is zero. And then at a sudden instant the time at, at what time this a phase voltage, a generator a phase voltage is zero at the same instant. This B generator A phase voltage is not zero. It is zero after 90 degree. That means when this, suppose this is the time. 
at this time when this voltage is this amount when the a generator voltage is this amount at that time this voltage is zero that means same fs voltage that means generator a and generator b the phase there is a phase angle difference between these two these two voltage is not the same phase angle there is a difference of phase angle how much that is 90 degree phase angle difference that means it is leading by 90 degree when this is zero it is not zero when when it has a positive magnitude then it is start zero so there is a difference of angle between these two that angle is 90 degree in the uh, angle frame uh, omega frame and if you go time frame there is a time difference between these two when this is zero it is not it is getting zero after some time okay so there is a call it is called phase angle so there is a another parameter of the voltage called a phase angle between these two voltages these are the four major parameter for any generator voltage when a generator is generating a voltage it has mainly that voltage has a mainly four parameter to check whether the voltage is the same suppose there are two generators running in one to run in parallel so before synchronizing or paralleling this two generators we need to check first is voltage magnitude how much both the generator the same voltage or different voltage whether both the generator has the same frequency or different frequency fourth parameter is whether the voltage sequence of the both the generators are same or not fourth parameter is whether the both the generators phase angle generated voltage phase angle both the generator are same or not that is also to be checked then also we need to check another parameter that number five this frequency suppose the frequency is not same that is fine and how the frequency is getting changed frequency is a steady state or there is a change in frequency that frequency again with the time it is getting changing what is whether the machine is accelerating or deaccelerating that is also to be monitored whether the frequency is a steady the frequency is not suppose the frequency is a 50 hertz it is fixed both the machine are running on 50 hertz that is very good but if the frequency is not 50 hertz again it is changing that changing it could be increased it could be decreased the how the frequency is getting changed that is we have to check the df dt of the frequency that means with the time how the frequency is getting changed that is also to be monitored that is also as an impact okay so these are the five parameters we generally monitor after monitoring only we can think for the parallel operation now there is a condition mentioned clearly what are the requirement for parallel operation of these two generator voltages so both the generator is producing we are considering both the generators are identical huh? here we are considering both the generators are identical in capacity same make generators okay that type of two generators suppose generator a and or you can say generator running and generator coming incoming generators and running generator there are two generators so how is the system i'm we are considering first simply simple arrangement suppose this is a generator it has produced three phase voltage this is a generator g suppose this generator is running so there is a breaker over here the breaker is closed okay this breaker is closed and it is going to the bus bar these are the three bus bar okay this is a a phase and this is a c phase this is a bus bar this breaker is closed and this is your running bus the bus is running this is a load bus you can see this is a load bus this breaker is closed at this moment so this is a voltage and it has a voltage g a is a it is a v i the running bus it is a running running bus it is a v i voltage is producing all parameters are designated by r this is running okay now we have another generator gb this is a g g g, g, g coming g incoming generator gi you can say incoming generator. this generator we want to what do you want we want this generator to be connected so there is also breaker is there but this breaker is not yet closed this breaker need to be closed so this is also here so this is a three bus so this is a A phase, this is a B phase and this is C phase. But this is not, it is open. This is a closed. So it is running and this is open. We have to close it. So this generator, we can say this is a running bus, running generator. This is the incoming generator. This incoming generator to be parallel with the running generators. This is the requirement. So this is a two generator condition. Now in that case, how we'll do that? We'll, what we need to check? We need to check first, they have both the generators, this generators and this generator there is a this is a incoming running bus and this is a incoming so what we have to check so we have to check the voltage over here before closing the breaker 
voltage over here and the voltage of this bus is same. That means we have to connect a voltmeter. We have to connect a voltmeter between these two. Okay, if we connect the voltmeter between these two or if this is either here or here you can connect. So in that case, if suppose this is the FS. In that case, what happens if these are the same voltage, then the voltmeter reading will be zero. That will detect the voltage is same or not. First requirement is voltage V R running voltage and incoming voltage. It is called I we are talking about RMS magnitude. It should be ideally it should be same. That means there is no difference of incoming and running voltage. But if we take the difference of this, voltage will be zero. Voltmeter reading will be zero. That is the first requirement. Okay. If it is not same, then we, I am coming to that. That is the ideal. I am talking for the ideal condition. Ideal condition, running generator voltage and the incoming generator which you want to connect with the parallel, that voltage should be identical. That is the ideal condition. Okay. That is first part. Second part, that means ideally VR minus VI, that should be ideally zero. Ideal condition. Number two, we said key frequency. Frequency of the running generator that is suppose 50 hertz, so that is a AFR, and frequency of the incoming generators, these two frequencies also will be same. So that means another way ideal condition is AFR minus AFI, or the difference this should be zero. That is the second requirement. Okay, third requirement, phase sequence of these and this should be same phase sequence. We have to check the phase sequence. Third is if the generator A phase sequence A, B, C, other generator phase sequence will be same A, B, C. Or if it is a A, C, B, then this should be also A, C, B. Phase sequence will be same. Fourth phase requirement, what we said the fourth requirement, phase angle. Suppose this is a particular, we can consider A phase, okay. If it is a A phase voltage like this, suppose this is a running generator A phase voltage, okay. And if we go to the second incoming generator, Incoming generator voltage will be same. It will be in line with this. It should not like this. It should not like this. It should not like this. In that case, I have a phase, phase angle difference. But if both black and blue, black and green color, this is a green, this is incoming is a green, huh? and this is a black is running. Black particular phase, suppose it is a phase, huh? but running generator a phase voltage. Incoming generator A phase voltage, if we plot, these will be coincide to each other. In that case, we can say there is no phase angle difference. Similarly, B phase will be the same, C phase will be the same. If that is the case, then we say phase angle, or this, if we put the phase angle delta, delta running, that and delta incoming, that should be same. That means running minus delta incoming, that should be zero difference. This is the fourth. It is the ideal condition. If and fifth point is the frequency drift of this generator A, if there is a changing in phase, suppose the frequency is same, both are 50 50, but both are changing slightly. Every with the time it is changing. The rate of change over here and both are changing. Suppose this is also changing, this is also changing. If that is to be changing, that change is not acceptable. That change should be made zero. But if still there is changing, we have to take action to stop the changing. Okay. If the, that is the ideal condition, the DFDT, that frequency change of either machine, that should be zero. That there is no acceleration or there is no deacceleration. Why I am telling is what is this frequency actually? This frequency of the voltage outcoming out the output of the generator is a voltage that has a frequency, but actually this frequency is coming from where? This frequency is coming from the turbine speed because we know the frequency and speed how it is related. We know 120. F by P is number of pole that equal to the speed of the turbine. So if the turbine running with a certain speed, then this speed will and each generator the number this is the number of poles. Suppose both the generators two pole machine. So if it is a two pole and if we need to run 50 hertz, then the turbine speed will be 3000 rpm. You calculate it two pole 50 hertz. So and to 60, 50, 60, 30, 3000 rpm. That means both the machine, it is connected with a prime mover. This is your prime mover, right? It is running this generator. This has a connected with the prime mover. This is a prime mover. So the PA prime mover should be running at 3000 RPM. If this machine are, I said the, both the machine should be identical. So identical, both are two pole machine and it is connected with the same prime mover. 
So when the prime mover running on 3000 RPM, then only it will produce 60 Hertz. If the prime mover speed gets changed, automatically, the in, as it increases more, automatically frequency will be more for the same generators. So that means when the, we say the frequency change with time is zero, it means that the generator is running with a, turbines is running with a constant speed. That is, it indicates, okay? So these are the parameters we need to check. If all this condition is zero, then we can say it is ideal condition for the generator to synchronize. We can see if this generator GR and incoming generator GB producing the producing voltage is this type of characteristics, same voltage, same frequency, same phase sequence, same phase angle, then we said it is ideal for the, and if the generators are identical, as far as winding, number of poles, pull, winding pitch, all this thing if it is identical, then we can say this is the ideal condition for synchronization, we can synchronize it, okay? We can connect this breaker, when this condition met, then immediately we can connect this breaker, close this breaker to the load bus, okay? But actually it is not possible to get in this way ideal condition. So if it is not the ideal condition, then how we can manage it? So that part we will now discuss. If it is not ideal, then what condition will allow us to synchronize this to generator? As per guideline, as per the guideline, this how much allow? Now as per guideline, this voltage difference between incoming generator and the running generator. If there is a voltage difference, that means V R difference V R. If there is a difference exist, that under that condition also we can connect. But the difference should not increase more than 0.5 percent of the rated condition. The difference of the voltage of this two machine, either is positive or negative difference, it should not more than 0.5 percent of the rated condition. If that is the condition, then we can accept either this difference will be zero or it can go up to 0.5 percent 0 to 0 0.5 percent that is the range if the range is within that limit then this synchronizing condition voltage synchronizing condition can be made or we can do the synchronization first parameter second parameter if the why it is more than we will i will explain afterwards why if it is not this then what is the problem second part the frequency device we say if the frequency is zero, difference is zero, very good. If not, then the running frequency difference, incoming frequency, if that equal to either zero is ideal condition, if not possible, zero to 0.1 percent. That means zero to 0 0.1 percent. This is the maximum frequency change. Difference between these two incoming and running generators should not be more than 0.1 percent. That means if it is a 50 hertz, 0.1 percent means how much? 0.1 percent means. 50 into 0.1, that means 0.5 hertz, that means 50.5, right? So the, up to this point, frequency difference can be acceptable. So this is the second parameter. Third parameter is your phase sequence. So now fourth, third parameter is this frequency. If the frequency is not same, there may be chance of drift. If there is a frequency drift, that frequency drift of either of the machine, this could be go up to 0.1 hertz per second. That is a within up to this limit synchronization is possible. Fourth point we said phase sequence. Phase sequence here both the phase sequence should be identical. Phase sequence we cannot compromise either ABC both the generator is running this or incoming A I B I C I will be same sequence or it is a A C B or it is also A C A dash C A dash C dash B dash same phase sequence for both the machine. Fifth condition is the phase angle of the machine, if it is not identical, up to 10 degree, 5 to 10 degree, generally normally 5 to 10 degree phase angle difference, we can, that is delta value 5 to 10 degree, we can accept, but more than that 5 to 10 degree is not acceptable. Now again, the 5 to 10 degree out of this, 5 degree phase difference is acceptable only if this generator is need to synchronize very regularly, but every day you are synchronizing the generator. In that case, we cannot go up to 10 degree. We can go up to, we have to limit within 5 degree. If it is a regular or this frequent synchronization is required, then phase angle shall not be more than 5 degree, phase angle difference. But if you synchronize the generator very occasionally, that was one time you just synchronize the generator, 
then maybe after six months you will you will go to synchronize again in that case we can go up to 10 degree phase angle difference that is a six feet parameter in addition to this during synchronization we have to check another two point it is required for the stable synchronizing operation number one is when you are synchronizing the machine incoming machine voltage should be slightly more than the running voltage incoming generator voltage we maintain i b i slightly more than v r not very very less maybe within point point two percent point three percent like that and incoming frequency f i that should be slightly less more than running frequency okay slightly this machine slightly bigger because i'm coming why it is required slightly more than the running frequency slightly suppose the difference we have said 0.1 it may be 0 0.05 percent maybe 0 0.2 hertz 50 has running we can make 50.2 hertz this the incoming generator running generator is 50 hertz then slightly higher frequency to be maintained if these are the condition maintained then we can synchronize the generator successfully or we can then when this condition is maintained then we can close the generator breaker which i show the incoming breaker close we can close the breaker then both will supply the load nothing will happen now why we need this thing that is we will discuss one by one why need the voltage identical because you know the reactive power transfer because this machine what is doing this both the machine these are the machine two machine is connected to the bus bar what is the purpose of this machine this machine will produce power and it will give to the load bus and the loads will be running that is the purpose it is not the purpose to give power from one machine to other machine that is not our purpose or purpose this machine will supply power this machine will supply power it will go to the load what is that power that power has a two component one is the active component p another is the reactive component q so this both p and q produced by the generator and it will go to the load but it's not like that this generator is producing active power and that power will go over here or this generator is producing reactive power that reactive power will come to the machine or the vice versa that is not the intention both the power will be coming to the bus bar from where it will go like we say the pipeline so this is one pipeline this is another pipeline it is coming to the common header suppose this is the common header it is entering purpose is this line liquid and this line liquid will go to the common header but if the pressure difference is between these two instead of going here it will flow in the other line so that is not the purpose so here also the same thing now if the voltage is not same then what will happen if the voltage is not same if this voltage suppose this running generator voltage and incoming generator voltage is not same suppose this voltage is more then what will happen this will feed power reactive power q power to this if this voltage is more and this voltage is less then what will happen there will be internal power flow from higher voltage machine to the lower voltage machine that is not our criteria because the reactive power flow q that decided by whom q equals to suppose this is a running generator voltage minus incoming different voltage different divided by synchronous reactance between the reactance between these two machine so this will decide the reactive power flow between this machine not the outside so if this zero then there is no reactive power flow but if there is a magnitude then the reactive flow is there so if the difference is very high then high amount of reactive power will come from one machine to other machine now this reactive power what it is doing it is maintaining the voltage generator voltage so if this reactive power come from this machine to this machine then what will happen bus voltage will go drop and this generator will take reactive from because this generator is taking reactive power from the other generator so this generator voltage will go down and this generator will go voltage it will develop the voltage so that is a unstable condition so we cannot accept this due to this reason second point if the frequency difference is there then what will happen the frequency what is doing we know the when the turbine is rotating it is giving the active power right the active power or p how we decide active power is decided by the rate of change of frequency yeah or the uh, with the frequency you know with the frequency as we increase the frequency machine can produce more power so dp by dw if we say this way or the gradient that power change of power with the frequency into f difference frequency difference that is give the power so how with the change of omega or frequency how the power is getting changed that into change of frequency give the power so if the frequency is not same then what will happen frequency is a replica of the active power so if the frequency is not same then what will happen one machine 
will produce active power and it will flow to the other machine. So active power will be circulating and when active power flow, then it will try what will happen. This, this is a generator. It is a rotating equipment. So suppose this is a bus bar. It is producing power P1. This is producing power P2. It is running with the frequency F1, FR. It is a FI. If these are not same, if then what will happen? Suppose this is more. So it is producing more power and that power is flowing over here. So this machine will try to, this power will try to rotate the machine. Instead of generator, it will try to rotate as a motor. So that is a danger for the power plant. So that we cannot tolerate. That's why it has a certain amount of, certain amount of frequency difference, absolutely certain amount we can accept. And this again, you know, the frequency is produced by how? By the torque. So if the amount of torque produced by the machine and the amount of torque produced by the machine is not same. So this torque imbalance can cause the shaft broken also, dangerous. So this is also a effect on the generator. That's why frequency must be same or within the 0.1 hertz. Third point is why we said the phase sequence should be identical because phase sequence is impact with the phase sequence. If the phase sequence is not same, if the phase sequence is different, then during synchronization, you understand, suppose one phase, because it is measuring this equipment which will be using for synchronization, that is measuring the voltage between the two phases. Suppose this is the A phase and by mistake, same time, this is the B phase. We are measuring this. Suppose we understand same phase sequence, but the A phase and the second machine B phase is interchanged. Then when you connect this thing, we are considering the interchange, but in our case, it is a, we are considering it is A phase, but it is actually due to the wrong phase sequence, it is B phase. So during synchronization, A phase to A phase voltage should be how much zero. But in that case, we are measuring actually A phase to B phase, which is not supposed to be zero, but when it is showing zero, actually there is a voltage of 180 degree difference. So that will cause opposite phase, right? So that will cause a huge short circuit current in the circuit. So if the phase sequence is not same, or phase sequence is wrongly measured, then the impact is, the, once you do the synchronization, immediately there will be short circuit current will flow in between these two machines that cause the machine burnout or machine uh, will be totally overstressed due to heating. So that is the problem. Fourth point is a phase angle. Why we said the phase angle should be identical? If you see that power transfer from one machine to other machine, how it is decided? We know the power transformer P that is decided by how? That is decided by running voltage into your incoming voltage minus running voltage. This divided by, sorry, this is a not running voltage, V into VR into VI into psi X into sine of sine delta of. Symbols into sine of delta. So this is the uh, power, uh, active power, running voltage into incoming voltage divided by x into sine of delta. We know this is the equation for the power. Now if this is a delta is a phase angle or a torque angle. Now if the phase angle, when the phase angle is zero between these two, then what will happen? This is the power transfer between these two machines. Huh? This is the two machine running and this is a connect to the bus. The amount of power flowing between these two machines, active power P, that is divided by how much? This generator voltage, incoming generator voltage divided by impedance between these two machines into sine of delta angle between these two machines, torque angle or phase angle, you can say. So now, if this sine delta delta is zero, then sine delta zero means there is no power flow between these two machines. But if this sine delta has some magnitude, then what will happen? Instead of giving power to the bus bar, there will be power flow between these machines. So that is not acceptable. That's why we said psi delta should be power angle should be zero. Otherwise, there will be a active power flow between these two machines. And it has a dangerous way. As I said before, if delta there is a power flow between these two machines, that means this power will try to produce more torque on this machine. So due to this unequal torque, this machine shaft can be broken. For 10 degree, every 10 degree phase angle different between these two voltages, it about one time torque, when a full load torque is generated. So suppose the, between these two machines, between these two voltages, phase angle difference is 100 degree. That at that time, if that 100 degree phase difference between these two, the amount of power flow from this machine to this machine 
will cause so much unequal torque on this machine that will be 10 times 10 times torque will be produced in the machine unequal torque which will obviously break the shaft okay so these are the impact of this unequal uh, phase angle so that's why we said the phase angle should be identical so and third fourth point we said that slightly voltage to be higher because when we are synchronizing the two generators suppose this is a running generator it is connect bus bar it is connected to the bus bar and this is the incoming generators so it is to be closed the moment it is closed it is a no load condition so immediately it will take some load because this frequency will be slightly higher so it will immediately taking the load immediately voltage will be dropped that's why it should be slightly higher so that immediate load can take it and similarly it should be higher slightly higher frequency because if it is slightly higher frequency then only it can take the load from the bus bar it will not power flow from here to here because initially it is running on no load the moment you close this breaker immediately it is connected to load it will supply the load to the load the moment machine take the load money app in reality it will be slow down it will be deaccelerated so to maintain that without deacceleration if we want to run we put the frequency slightly higher voltage slightly higher this is the reason all this thing we need so this is the six condition to run the machine to run the identical machine in parallel operation or do the synchronization now the next part of this how we do this synchronization there are different techniques for doing the synchronization we divide the techniques for synchronization in three part one part we call is a manual synchronization second part we call we talk it about semi automatic or semi manual you can say and third is a automatic synchronization in case of synchronization there is a three different way we can do this synchronization how we do that first part is a we call is a manual synchronization okay manual synchronization we call is semi automatic semi automatic or manual with a protection and third is a full automatic synchronization these are the three operation we do okay in the case of manual operation how we do that there is a different method lamp method there is a synchronoscope method okay there are two mainly in the manual method there are two method we have one is a lamp lamp method lamp another is a synchronoscope synchronoscope that is the equipment which we use for the parallel operation the synchronization called synchronoscope now in the lamp operation how we do it the first way i am coming so manual has a two option okay now i am going quickly otherwise we can finish it 40 second 40 minutes now in case of manual operation how we do that suppose this is a one generator is running and it is giving to the power to the running bus this is a running bus okay this is a phase b phase and c phase this is a breaker breaker is closed and this is a incoming generator gr it is a running generator it is running at this moment so this is a breaker this breaker we need to close okay and then it will connect to the bus bar we have to close it so what do we do we connect incoming because this breaker is open there is no voltage over here we put a lamp it is a fs this is cp this is fs so between this a and this running generator here or this bus we can put a lamp this is a one lamp similarly between the b phase this is a b phase this is a this is a b and this is c between the b phase here and the running bus this is a running b phase we put another lamp and the c phase this is a c phase this is a this is a b phase this is a phase and this is a c phase we put another lamp over here between the c phase this is your c b phase and this is your c phase okay this suppose it is a phase lamp this is a b phase lamp this is c phase lamp now you see what will happen when it is a when we are doing the parallel operation we said whatever we said that this is getting the voltage from this a bus generator a bus you see this is connected a bus this is a bus when this generator and this generator producing the same voltage with the same phase sequence and same frequency then this lamp will not glow otherwise you can say the lamp is blinking if the voltage is not same then the, it will get the voltage always this is your va voltage vr voltage this is a vi voltage incoming voltage so the difference of voltage coming across the lamp if the voltage difference is zero it will become dark but if there is a voltage is there then it this will glow and if the frequency is not same if the frequency of this and this same then no frequency difference then the lamp will be not glow but other lamp will be blinking if the frequency difference is there lamp will not stay steady it will be blinking okay 
and from this we can make out so by this three lamp if one now what will we, if this breaker to be closed manually how when will close it when we see all the three lamps all the th before that we have changed up we have with the phase sequence meter we have checked the phase sequence before doing this operation what we have to do we have to connect the phase sequence meter on the running generator we have to connect the phase sequence meter over here then we have to check the phase sequence of this machine and this machine is identical that is to be checked when the phase sequence is checked then only we will check this with the lamp test we will see the lamp and when all the lamp is dark means all the three phase are in phase with each other and with the same magnitude and same frequency then only we will close the breaker this is a lamp method this is a called three lamp black method there is another option is there we call it two one dark two bright what is that here is the all three dark method now in that case this second two lamp a phase lamp connected across the same phase b phase lamp and c phase lamp is a cross connected it is not connected to the same phase here c phase lamp is connected to the b phase here and b phase lamp is connected to the c phase here so in that case there will be what will happen there will be phase voltage will be coming over here so when that means one lamp is connected between this a phase b phase other two lamp connected one lamp is connected between this machine b phase and running bus c phase and another is running incoming is run as c phase running bus b phase so in this two lamp there is a phase volt between two line voltage is injected between these two so when it is in synchronizing then this lamp will become black but other two lamp will be fully glow because when it is in phase then this lamp will get the voltage of this generator b phase and this generator c phase and in phase when they are in same phase same sequence then there will be phase line voltage will be between this lamp so the lamp will be glow so this lamp will be full bright a steady full bright and this lamp will be totally black that is the time when we have to close the breaker so this is a fully manual operation it needs an expert operator second option is along with this we use the we can use the synchroscope the synchroscope is another equipment which is monitoring the frequency change as well as the phase angle phase difference as well as voltage everything is monitored how we connect the phase sequence phase sequence meter is connected between these two phase to two phase supply giving to the synchroscope it is a running bus and from the generator bus will give the same two phase supply synchroscope is equipment which can monitor the frequency of these two if this and there is a pointer there is a hand this hand is rotating when the voltage and frequency is same and voltage then this if the same then this will become a steady at 12 position but if this pointer moves that means the frequency is not same or voltage is not same there is a change if it move very fast suppose it is moving clockwise that means incoming generator voltage frequency is higher than the outgoing and it is changing if it is move in the anti clockwise that means running generator voltage frequency higher than this so that is a immediately you have to take action if it is moving very fast that means you have to reduce the frequency voltage of this and if it is a moving clockwise very fast you have to change the or you have to increase this one so that it will be difference will be reduced and if it is a, a steady and the pointer is a 12 o'clock and it is moving very slowly either this direction or this direction then within 5 to 10 degree angle you have to close it then so the synchroscope is equipment which is monitoring the frequency difference voltage difference and then how fast the frequency is getting changed all this thing is monitored and accordingly the pointer will be moving when clockwise moving means incoming generator parameter is higher when anti clockwise is moving running generator parameter is higher so you have to take the necessary action to control these parameters and when it's passing through the 12 position and 12 position and very slowly within the 5 to 10 degree angle minus 5 to plus 5 degree angle you have to close the breaker then it will be done so this is a called manual supervision method manual method now there is a semi automatic method what is that with this synchroscope you are closing the breaker now what has happened during closing the breaker suddenly it may go off in that case you do a wrong operation in that case it could happen that i said already it could be if the voltage difference is high then the active power flow will be there the machine will be heated or it could be that circulating is a short circuit current that follow if it is out of phase or the phase sequence is not same then they are into short circuit current the machine will trip so to avoid that thing what do we do we put another relay we call it a check synchronizing relay in the breaker control scheme what do we do when we put this breaker control switch we are closing the breaker by breaker control switch while observing the synchroscope right 
when you see the synchroscopy in zero position, this light, suppose one, one uh, uh, dark light and two bright light you, we are using, the light is a black condition, we close the synchroscopy, we close the generator breaker, at that time it suddenly goes off one of the generator, then it will be wrong synchronizing and generator will trip. So avoid this thing, what do we do? This is a DC bus, in the generator, now we are coming to the breaker control scheme, how we do that? Now in normally, we know this is a fuse provided, then we have a breaker uh, closing uh, switch or pull button, whatever you say. This may be closing pull button or switch. Then from here, or it may be some from the remote, you can do the closing by some contact. And then what do we do over here? There is a breaker trip coil or all the breaker contact, all the interlock, everything is here. Here we put on the relay contact. It is called check relay, 25 synchro check relay. We call it synchro check relay. With this relay, how it is getting, suppose the relay, this is the relay coil. It gets power supply, one power supply get from the running VR, another is coming from VI. Okay, it is connected. Suppose this is a running generator. Okay, this is a running generator. Are running. These are the three phase voltage. So we connect like this. One phase. And this is a incoming generator, GI. So it has also three phase. So one phase will be connected. Between these two phase will be connected. This is connected over, this is VI. So these are the two voltages coming. Now this check synchronizing relay, it can monitor the voltage from this. Uh, this relay has a capacity. When you give the PT voltage supply to this relay, it will monitor the voltage as well as the frequency. So when both the voltage and frequency is same, immediately the relay will operate. And this relay will give an output contact. This output contact is connected over here. This is the output contact of the relay. Okay. This is the output, or you can say this is the NO contact, or you can say this is a like this. This is a contact. So the moment this relay activate, immediately this contact is closed, and then you close this push button, then the breaker will be closed. Now, suppose one you press it and keep it pressing, and at that time suddenly it goes out of synchronizing. You don't know. At that time, suppose this is a change in the voltage, or this this relay is suddenly is relay measured, the frequency and voltage is out of range, then immediately this relay will deactivate. And the contact will get open. So this, even you press the button, it will not close. So this is called semi. It is a it is a prevention of after pressing the breaker control switch or push button for closing the breaker. Uh, after that operation, if suddenly these generators goes out of voltage or out of frequency, this check synchronizing relay protect the generator from. It will not allow to synchronizing, and that will help to overstress the generators. Then we have to take a second attempt. So this is called semi-automatic. Third option is this, this uh, uh, relay, this check synchronizing relay, instead of check synchronizing relay, we can use a full synchronizing relay. That synchronizing relay will do this operation as well as if it is out of range, then it will try to control the voltage and frequency of the generators. This relay has a output contact for the breaker closing circuit. So this is a complete synchronizing relay. Suppose this is a synchronizing relay, it's not synchro check relay. So this has a two PT supply, one PT supply coming from the running generator, B running, this is a B incoming, okay? This is coming. Now this, it has output contact. This has output contact going to breaker control circuit. In addition to this, it can give the analog signal or digital signal to control the device, which is controlling the voltage and frequency. So it will go to ABR. To control the VR, it will go to the governor. It is a device which is controlling the voltage of the machine and it will give the signal to the governor to control the speed or frequency. So this way it called the complete fully automatic relay. So this is this can be also used in the synchronization. Okay. So these are the synchronization process. Now we'll give uh, we have shown the connection, voltage supply connection directly, but actually. It is not like that because it is in case of low voltage, if the generator is low voltage, suppose this is the generator, it is producing 415 volt, it is going to the bus, right? In that case, I can take the signal directly from here to the relay or my synchroscope, everything. But if suppose it is a 6.6 kV, I cannot connect in this way. In that case, what I have to do? I have to use a PT. What I will do? I will connect a PT between these two. In, in case of single PT, what we will do? We will connect PT like this. And then the secondary PT may be 120 volt, it will be grounded over here. 120 volt, it will go to the meter or it will go from here. So you have to use a PT in that case, in both the cases, in all the cases. If it is not 
415 volt. In that case, we have to use the PT for giving supply to the synchroscope to the lamp. We have connected the lamp directly over here. But this 6.6 KV is not connected. So in that case, what I have to do? I have to put a PT over here. The PT supply will go to the lamp. That was 120 volt lamp. We will put it over here. DJ, you have to do this operation. Now, this is a, we have shown so far is a two single generator is running. Now, it may happen a power plant has a five generators, which is to be a six generators, multiple generators are there. If you want to connect those generators by the parallel operation, so in that case, how we do that? We cannot, we cannot connect multiple uh, lamps, multi because we have seen here two generators, one set of lamps. But in case of multiple generators, we cannot connect this lamp set synchroscope for all generators. In that case, what do we have to do? We have to make some arrangement. How we do that? Because all these meters and lamps, everything is taking the generator supply. Okay. But at the same time, you are not synchronizing multiple generators. You will be synchronizing one by one generators. So we have to select one by one generator voltage for inco as incoming. Suppose one is running, other is incoming. Okay. So with the running generators, I have to synchronize other, another four generators may be incoming, one after another. So at one time, I have to sense one voltage only. So what, how we'll do that? Suppose this is a five generator I'm drawing over here, okay, for showing how we do this, okay. Now, this is the one generator, it is producing a voltage, right. Now, from here, what we do for this connection of this various, this synchronizing part, what do we do? We put a, suppose we put a PT over here, okay. This is our PT. This PT supply is going to a, so this is a load bus, this is a power bus, huh? it is going to the load power bus, from where the loads are connected, okay. This is going to load bus and this is a separate bus we are creating over here, that is for the PT supply, suppose this is a running bus, okay. This is a running bus, so here we put a switch, suppose this is a switch, this switch, this is a two pole, of, there is a switch available, multiple pole switch available. Suppose of that switch, suppose pole number 1 and 2, you connect over here, okay. So, this is your PT bus, okay. Now, this is the running, this is the one, uh, the, uh, low, uh, this is a bus, it is one, then the second generator, similarly, it has also these three phases, we put a PT over here, huh? the PT secondary also, it is going to the same way, it has a two pole over here, it is connected to the, this bus, we can do in this way, connected. Third generator also will connect in this way. Fourth generator will connect on. These are the Swiss. All are Swiss position. 1, 2, 3, 4, maybe 5, 6. Then we may be 7, 8. Now, this way it is a multiple Swiss. Single Swiss with a multiple pole. So if we position, we can configure the Swiss. If we put a position, suppose this is a generator 1. Okay. The generator 1. It is a generator 2. It is a generator 3. It is a generator 4, like this. So when you put the generator 1, this two pole will make. When you put the generator 2, this two pole will make. When generator 3, this 5, 6 will make. Generator 4, 7, 8 will make. Like this way, we can multiple switch, we can put install one, where all the PT supply is connected and it is going to the bus. And then we can connect from this load, we can also, this is a load bus, it is connected to the load. Here also we can put a PT, okay. And this PT, Will, connect, will be coming to a another bus. That is we call load bus. Okay, this is a load bus. PT load bus. And this is a PT janitor bus. Okay. Now, when, suppose this janitor, uh, this bus, suppose none of the janitor is running. In that case, this bus has no power. So, this PT output supply is zero. That means the load bus is dead condition. Now, you want to synchronize. In that case, I don't need the synchronizing. If the bus is dead, simply, simply I put the generator 1 in this position, close the breaker. Then the bus will be live. Then I will get the voltage. Now I will put what I will do. Now between this, suppose I have a synchroscope over here. Now once this generator load bus is uh, energized, then I will put it. Now I am coming to, this is a synchroscope. In this synchroscope, I will give this uh, load bus voltage. And this, from the generator, this generator bus, I will give this voltage over here. The synchroscope will be working. Similarly, I will connect the lamp, one lamp I will connect over here, if I go three black lamp, so in that case, I have to take the three phase supply, okay. If we go the black lamp, in the, I have drawn only one phase, in that case, I have to take three phase supply. If I take only synchroscope, then I don't need the three phase, only synchroscope need only two phase. In that case, I can do this way. 
But if I go by the lamp method, then I have to take a three phase PT from each generator. And then I need a three pole over here, three pole plus neutral. So then it will come in. This is a one phase will be connected over here. This is a load bus. And this bus, suppose this is A phase. This phase, this is A phase. Similarly, B phase, we have to get here another B phase. Connect a lamp over here, C phase to C phase. Now, whenever we put the switch, suppose this is connected, then this phase voltage will be connected to this from that lamp will be operating. We am closing this breaker. Then I will change the switch position, second position. Then second PT supply will come. Then from the, this bus will be always live from any of the generator. And this bus is remain permanently live once dead bus closing is over. So in this way, one after another generator, I can synchronize in this process. Okay. So this is the multiple generator synchronizing process in this PT supply arrangement. So this is all about synchronization. So next session, I will try to finish as this is urgent from my friends has said it. So I will try to close, uh, finish this thing within this week, all the three sessions. Next session, we will discuss about the active power sharing. After the synchronization, what will happen? After the synchronization, now your load comes in. But how the load will be shared between this machine? All the machine may not take the load equally. That part we will discuss in the next session. Then we will discuss the reactive power, how they are sharing. Okay. This two session I will do afterwards. Within this week, I will try to complete it. So this is about the synchronization of the ge alternating generators. Okay. So this is all about. Thank you very much. And please keep it up.